Okay. okay. Rocco with virtual prototyping. Yes. Take it away. Thank you. So my name is Rocco Jonak. I work with Minres and uh, actually Aikian, who is also mentioned here. He sits over there. So if you want to talk to us later in the, in the breaks. Um, so Minres is... Let's just... Uh, is a small company, a hell, uh, a privately held company uh, based here in, in Munich, so our commute was relatively short today. Uh, we are focusing on uh, met methodology and, and uh, services for, for productivity IPs. We also recently went into uh, developing uh, some on some dedicated uh, IPs, implementation IPs like RISC-V uh, RTL. We also have some, uh, some hybrid solutions for RTL and VP uh, simulations together. I guess... <sighs> Oh, yeah. So on this slide, we, we try to show a little bit how we, we see kind of the uh, common flow or the common uh, components of, of SOC development. Uh, you have hardware design, uh, and hardware design more and more very heavily relies on IPs. So, so we see that more and more our design actually becomes uh, pretty much a mix of, of uh, bringing in different IPs, integrating those, implementing uh, those IPs. And then you have somewhere else uh, this whole bunch of, of software and uh, often quite um, separated from the hardware development. And if the software wants to have a view of what's going on during the hardware development, uh, you have basically some vehicles to do pre-silicon, uh, to give the software a pre-silicon view of the hardware. Uh, one of them is virtual prototypes, VPs, uh, and we really uh, like VPs as a, as a methodology to provide visibility to the software. Uh, there is also FPGA prototyping, which we also uh, sometimes use, and especially also a mix of the two. And there's, of course, emulation. Emulation is not really uh, our focus. It's really, for, for that, I would say we are simply too small. So, so these methodologies provide a view of the, of the hardware world uh, to, the, uh, to the software guys. And what we see actually more and more and what we're trying to enable is that actually the, the software is often driving certain requirements and wants to drive certain requirements of the hardware design. But uh, well, reality is often that is not that easy, especially not if you have no uh, real visibility of what's going on during the hardware design. So that's why we are focusing on this providing visibility uh, and uh, helping software developers to maybe even uh, influence the, the hardware design early on. And uh, we, we also see uh, these models often as a good basis. I mean, uh, virtual prototypes, classically, you start at least with a model that is more abstract, that is uh, fast, allowing the, the software really to run quickly on some hardware model. But if you want to really get uh, realistic results for architectural analysis, uh, you really need to often, you need to uh, refine your models and uh, then often the, the problem becomes how much effort do you want to actually spend, how much effort do you want to put into this model development because after all at the end of the day the hardware development is the most important thing. Uh, but we believe if you start early on with uh, virtual prototypes and you use uh, productivity libraries, which I will show in a moment, uh, then you can really also use that methodology to, uh, to improve your models at the end and to get really to, to models in a relatively short time that give you relevant information about, uh, uh, about the performance of your system. So, so now uh, let's get a little bit more more concrete. So what we uh, what we provide, for instance, is an environment uh, called DBT Rice. It's an it's an open source. Uh, it's an available open source. So what uh, DBT Rice allows you to do, it allows you to to describe basically your your processes. Uh, now as, as an instruction set simulator. Now uh, what we what we do, a lot of people, well, it's, uh, if you describe everything yourself, this is quite some, some effort. So, for instance, for RISC-V, we have already some implementations where we went uh, through this step of basically putting all these different uh, descriptions uh, to, together. Uh, also, by the way, the, the way how you describe the processor is open source, so it's not tied into some tools. We know there are some other solutions where you're tightly 
uh, linked into tools in order, uh, in order to do that. So here you really have an open source uh, solution for that. So what you get out of all these uh, out of all these different descriptions of your processor is an ISS, an instruction set simulator. Now, on an instruction set uh, simulator, you, you need to provide a number of, of services in order to really um, realistically be useful to, to a software developer. Uh, specifically, you, you need a, a connection to a debugger because a software developer will, will want to debug its software running on this, uh, on this ISS. And what you see uh, on, on the bottom, so, so the, uh, this, this ISS is basically the, the top part, and it is a very important part of your system, but it's not the only part of your system. Uh, there is also uh, interconnects, there is different peripherals, and these peripherals are in, in all systems basically uh, important. Uh, without, uh, often we see actually that, that people uh, using, let's say, closed source environments where these peripherals are kind of modeled in a, in, a, in a closed environment. You don't even know exactly how they are exactly modeled, what, what impact they have. Uh, so we, we really believe that you want to have dedicated components that are easily integratable and composable and decomposable, because these different peripherals that you have in your system, they will look very different depending on, on your system. We believe that. Uh, almost no uh, two systems look completely alike there. Uh, and in this virtual prototyping uh, uh, environment, you can also, of course, pretty efficiently integrate models of your, of your system environment. We see, for instance, that, that people model also uh, things like sensors, like motors. Uh, and what that allows you to do is then you have one uh, whole model that where you can debug your software and you can also use software mechanisms starting, stopping, uh, really to see the state of your entire system. Um, so here, just one more picture uh, showing basically uh, when you use a software model of your, your system, you really what you can do basically is you can use one environment to both debug the entire system, the entire platform, but also use the same system to debug the software running on that system. And we find that uh, pretty efficient. You can, you can efficiently then uh, also discuss with, uh, with people that are writing software what impact actually their, their software has on your, on your hardware environment. So uh, we already saw the, uh, a very big part is this uh, ISS, this instruction set simulator, uh, but you also need all these peripheral components. Now we, uh, uh, we have a productivity library that allows you to model efficiently these uh, peripherals. There is also uh, some projects that I will show at the end that are open source available that have used SCC to, to provide uh, uh, models, but the focus of SCC is really to allow you to efficiently uh, uh, model these, uh, these components yourself because we believe strongly that in, in many projects the peripher uh, peripherals look very different. You need maybe another type of peripheral uh, and, and here this, this open source library allows you to get to this point uh, very quickly where you, where you model, where you can provide these additional models. Uh, SCC has different components. Uh, we believe actually a build system is, is something, uh, a common build system is something that we see as very uh, important uh, uh, and, and very commonly uh, actually needed in a, in a project. It relies on open source software, of course. Uh, but what we did here is we provided uh, links to commonly used integration tools because also one of the things that we see with virtual prototypes is that um, often people have different uh, target tools that they want to use, uh, but you, they don't want to bind themselves into one of these uh, tools. So what SCC, what is common uh, build system, allows you to do to kind of switch uh, easily between uh, different target systems, whether you want to go for a tool from Cadence, Synopsys, uh, or just some uh, based on the open source implementation of, of System C. Um, yes, I think I have some. Ah, 
Okay. Uh, uh, maybe I, I should uh, also talk about uh, some of the other components that are uh, that are in SCC. Uh, there is some some uh, common uh, elements that are useful for for modeling. Uh, both for, for the system C in, in general and specifically for LT, uh, for loosely timed uh, components. There is some common bus interfaces. Those uh, bus interfaces become actually very important when you go for an, uh, a more detailed uh, uh, architectural model, then you really want an, an, uh, an bus interface description that, that really allows you to model exactly the details of bus interfaces like AXI, like AES, like CHI, and those are also provided in SCC. Uh, another feature that we, that we find uh, often quite useful uh, is to use actually Python as a as a description as a structural description of your uh, of your models. So if you remember these different components that you have, your ISS, your peripherals, your bus models, uh, you can of course always uh, have a top level basically in in C++. But what we do see often that uh, is that people want to have some flexibility, want to play around with this uh, structure, and this is where actually Python as a as a front end can be quite useful, and we have something that we call Python C, also an open source, uh, uh, an open source offering, where you can actually use Python to integrate your different components. And uh, we really tried to make it as easy as possible to integrate these models by really, uh, you, you uh, basically need to provide uh, your models in a, in a shared library. And uh, this, this PyCC uh, binding actually would allow you without any uh, further integration to kind of pull, to, to, to look into these shared libraries and to see which components are available. Uh, of course, it, it does make sense to have kind of for a common look and feel of these different models to have a common interface of, of all these models. And so this is what we would call Pythonization to, to, to make it basically a little bit more convenient to, uh, to use these models with the Python front end. And this is also uh, one of the things that is provided in, in SCC. And yes, I also wanted to mention that uh, Accelera, the standardization uh, committee, has actually adopted PyCC as, as one of their, their standards. Um, so what we, what we often see uh, is uh, people in, in, in general, it, it looks very interesting to have all these models, but realistically, uh, creating a model is actually more effort um, and it takes time. So people are not getting that uh, excited just to have the model. But what is getting exciting is when you actually get, get results uh, from your run. So it's not enough to just run a simulation. Uh, uh, typically, you want to really get some, uh, some results and to visualize those results. So that's why the last thing that I want to talk here a little bit about uh, is what we, what we do, how do we, we uh, support the result analysis. Uh, so, so this is, we, we find that actually uh, also even more important once you, you add more of the accuracy into the, into the model. So you have some base models that just run your software, but then later on maybe you want to, to add some more accuracy to, your, to find out also latency, uh, bandwidth kind of uh, numbers. Uh, and once you, you do that, you really need some efficient way to also to trace data from your, your simulation. And uh, there we find actually that it's still a bit, uh, in, in, it is still a bit difficult uh, if for some of these formats uh, to find a common standard. So we are providing as part of the SCC some, some formats for, for tracing, but there should be still let's say, more uh, adopted, more commonly adopted in the, uh, in the community. And uh, we find that open source, of course, there is, is a great way to, uh, to provide these formats, but hopefully they will also get, get adopted. Uh, today, a lot of the, the performance analysis capabilities that we see are really tightly linked into, into tools, into tools from Cadence and Opsys, and uh, those are very good tools, but we all know uh, open source tools are better. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. 
So uh, one of the things then, if you use SCC and the formats that are provided in SCC, you can actually analyze, for instance, your transaction and your, uh, and your signal type data in a tool called SC Viewer, which is also available as, as, uh, as an open source tool on, on, on GitHub. And it allows you to, to visualize uh, waveform type uh, information, for, but for transactions. Uh, and you can also uh, pull then the, the, the details of these individual transactions, either in a table-like format or in a, in a detailed view. Um, yes. uh, besides this, uh, the, this kind of... Uh, uh, this, this kind of tracing of, or this kind of visualizing of, of a trace, it is also, we see very common that you want to do kind of some post-processing because often uh, it's not only the, the, the waveform type analysis, uh, you want to uh, often get an, um, just some common performance numbers, uh, your, your bandwidth, your latency, uh, min, max kind of uh, things. So we, uh, these common formats also allow you, of course, then to provide post-processing uh, scripts. We, we do have internally there uh, already some, some solutions. Not all of those are, are open source, but I think based on an open source uh, format, you can easily imagine that it is uh, relatively uh, easy then to, to write your own post-processing uh, scripting. And the kind of the final goal, what we always try to, if somebody asks us, why do we do all of this? Why do we get there? Is, is then having some kind of a, of a nice dashboard-like view where you actually see all your results together in one nice view. Uh, and this is typically where people then kind of see why you want to go there. But uh, before you get there, there is quite a lot of, of work that has to be done. And I think the last slides that I... And just I wanted to have here also uh, some of the uh, some of the open source uh, offerings listed here. And I think since the slides are probably, uh, I don't think you want to uh, memorize these uh, links, but the uh, slides are probably available then later through the website. All right. okay. Good timing. Uh, we probably have time for one question, one or two. Was that, that waveform viewer, that looked like it used GTK waves sort of underneath somewhere? So, <laughs> we, we do work also a lot with, with GTK wave, but uh, this was not GTK wave. Uh, oh. It is inspired, uh, I would say, by GTK wave. Uh, should I say that? Yeah, well, yeah inspired. Uh, actually, it would, uh, one great thing would be if GTK Wave would be able uh, to, to visualize these transactions, but uh, frankly, we are always looking and we don't see too much activity oh, sure. there. Yeah, yeah. Cool. It looked good, though. It's nice to visualize that stuff. Um, okay, if there are no questions, shall we? Oh, one question. Over here. We'll, just, we'll just do one, okay? We'll chat to him at lunch. Thank, thanks a lot. Um, maybe that's it's pretty obvious, but why did you choose uh, QEMU versus Core DSL for your instruction set simulator? QEMU. So, so no, we actually didn't use QEMU. I, I don't know where did you get this. Uh, no, why did not? Why uh, did, why did not? I not use? Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, so QEMU is is one of the uh, one of the examples of what I would call a, a closed system where you uh, basically have within your environment also all your peripherals uh, model. They, I, I, we do know they have links uh, uh, into the system C world with TLM2 uh, ports, but it is kind of an, an overhead. Uh, we, we, we saw some examples where we felt that the overhead is, is a little bit too, too high, the solution to link in a full QEMU environment. However, we do, I think there is now some, uh, some project where just the core of the technology is being taken and you can use that core kind of as a back end. And this is actually one of the things that we are, that we are also working on to have this core system also as one of the, the options that you could use as part of this DPT-RISE uh, ISS. It would still, the, the interface 
to the outside world would still be a TLM2 interface because we feel like for for composition and decomposition of uh, of platforms that is still the, the most common and most efficient way. Cool. All right. Um, any other questions? You can find Rocco outside at lunch. Um, let's thank the speaker again. Cheers. <laughs>